Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Just going to unload this one down here. I've actually been up to field one and I have finished uh, drilling the field up there and tidied it all up. It's ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to unhitch this stuff here. I'm really hoping that this tractor can actually pick up that plow. Um, there is a strong possibility that it won't be able to, uh, but we shall see. I would also like to say I've had a few people suggest that I try the new manual attach mod um, and I had a look at it, I tried it, um, but two machines on this map I couldn't get them to unhitch, they just would not unhitch when I had the manual attach mod um, attached, uh, well working, so I've no idea why that might be, but it doesn't seem to work properly, um, no I don't want to do that, it, do it doesn't seem to work properly with this map. Um, no idea why, I couldn't answer you with that one, but uh, until there's a slightly updated version, something improved on it, or, you know, whatever, whatever the case might be, um, I will avoid using it. I'll try it again, um, and do a bit of research and see if there's anything in particular that I've missed, but I, yeah, at the moment, I really don't... <laughs> uh, we've got the front weight on here, and it's still way, way too heavy. Um, I'll tell you what... Before I go any further, I better just do my weekly question. I am considering getting some greenhouses. Um, I've had a few people say they'd like me to do a few more placeables. And after my long chat about beekeeping last week, um, a few people said that they would like me to put some bee houses out. Considering that I have kept bees, although I've never kept any bees in beehives that look like these. I've, I'm, I do know that they exist. I've seen sort of pictures and video of them, but I have never personally been anywhere near one that looks like this um but you know having bees on the map would be quite good so i have had people suggest i should get at least one beehive so i will consider that when we've got a little bit more money but at the moment i'm thinking about getting four greenhouses two tomato ones and two lettuce ones and we'll probably put them down near the cows somewhere because we're going to be getting cows very soon um so that'll be a hundred thousand dollar investment into greenhouses so do you think that i should or do you think that i shouldn't yes or no it's a very simple question um, head into the comment section down below and let me know what you think. It's your vote, it's your game, and of course don't forget to actually vote on the card that should have come up on here. Just click on it and you can cast your vote. So let's just move this one off of here. And very, very slowly and carefully we'll try and back it away into the shed, I think. Actually no, I'm just going to put it over here. This entire machine is absolutely filthy. Um, so if we put it over here we can unhitch the plough and then we can use one of the other tractors when we bring them down here to put everything away clean and tidy like um back up here i would like to get started on the harvest and i'm fairly certain that come the morning our crops will be ready to harvest so let me just lower that one now the one thing i don't like is that you don't have like two levels of lowering so we unhitch and then it pops back up out of the ground and um, there's something that i've always kind of disliked about this game, I'm actually going to take the front weight off and I'll put that one over here, um, is the fact that you can't, um, you don't have like two separate levels for lowering stuff down, you know, you can't sort of do the first one where it touches it to the ground, the second one where it goes into the ground for the machines that do go beneath the surface of the soil. Let's just back this one up, but anyway, that's, that's only a minor detail, I'm sure that will come out eventually, maybe FS19. Might even have to wait until FS21 for it. We shall see. Um, I'm fairly confident that there will be both of those games. So let's close that one up. We're just using the mouse to do that. And I'm going to start heading back up to the top. So we go up to field one. I'm going to load the Challenger because that's the really slow one. And I'm also going to load up the Cultivator with the Challenger. And then the Amazon Condor, which is a much longer machine. That one... I mean, let me turn the lights on because it is starting to get a bit dark. Down there. It's shaking around a little bit. I don't really know what it's doing. Um, yeah, the Amazon Condor, we'll put that one onto the back of the Valtra and we'll drive that one down separately. But I'll do that overnight. Right. I really don't know what's going on here at the moment. This is doing some very, very weird stuff. Um, occasionally, you get weird things happen in this game. And this looks to be one of those weird... <laughs> it's sticking into the road. I, I, I... What is going on with this thing? Okay. Um, right, this is all new to me. Let me unhitch that. It might be that we just need to sort of shunt it back a bit. Is something going weird with the, the wheels? 
Whatever is it doing? Has anyone ever seen this happen before? Because this is definitely a first to me. I might have, I might actually have to reset this to the to the shop. Um, it looks like it's trying to drop through the road for some reason. I don't quite know why it's trying to drop through the road. Um, if I use it, because the camera will go anywhere. There doesn't look like there's a gap in the road or anything like that. Let me try going forward. No, it's definitely not like I've... Maybe it's the, the direction we're turning. That is some weird stuff. That is some next level stuff going on there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, try that. Try hitching it back up again. Right, now... Yeah, it, there's something about the road right here. It doesn't seem... It doesn't seem to like the road right where I am. Um... And it's backing up wrong as well. If I turn, no, it's as soon as I try to turn, it's doing that. Right, I really, really don't know what's going on with this. I have never seen this before in my life. Uh. Hmm. Right, I am going to puzzle this through. I might end up having to. Um, well, we, I was going to say do some game-breaking stuff. We're already gone past game-breaking. This is this is way past the, the realms of game-breaking. Um, I'll see what I can do and hopefully fix it. I'll let you know what I did when I do figure it out. And I will meet you up at Field 1. Okay, I swear this thing is possessed. I've been, drive, I've been trying to drive along. It's lifting itself right up. And it's like there's something caught underneath the trailer. Um, but what it is, I've got no idea. So I'm going to ha now have to try actually resetting it to the shop and see if that makes any difference I don't even I, it might be because we had to use the um, put the plow on the back of it it might be something to do with that I'm hoping it's not because I installed and then uninstalled the you know it would help if we actually included trailers in our list Is it trailers no it's not trailers it's that one um, it might be because we actually had to oh that's just the back half Right, well, let's reset that bit. Yes. Okay, and it's dropped it back down again. And I will also try to reset. Let's go up here. Yeah, there's another bit there. Not that one. There. Reset that one as well. Right, I'm going to go up to the shop and see what I can find out what's going on with this. It's, it's almost like there's something stuck underneath the trailer that's holding it up in the air. But I can't imagine why it's thinking there is that. And the only explanation I can think of at the moment is that it's something to do with me testing that manual attaching mod. Um, and it not liking it or something. But I'll, anyway, I will go to the shop, I'll hitch up and I'll meet you up at field one. Right, I managed to reset it and it seems to have been okay now on the journey up here. So we'll see what it behaves like. I've never seen it do that before and I have used it a fair bit in the time lapse series. Um, so, yeah, I really don't know what that was all about. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhitch this one here. We've had a growth stage come through, but the last little bit that I planted when I was just tidying up doesn't look like it's come through. So we've got two separate growth stages there, which means that actually our crop, um, our canola, is going to be completely ready. So let me just turn all these lights on. Extra side lights as well. Um, if you want to go back a bit further so I'm hoping that I can get the challenger and the cultivator both on together onto the gold hofer and we can carry them back like that and then uh, we do need to fill this one up with fuel I think I've got a fuel tank back at the yard um, we're gonna need to probably fill up another tractor as well we'll be able to use the Tatra Phoenix to assist us with our harvest this time round because um, actually, I don't even know if this Challenger can fit on that trailer. That's going to be a bit interesting. Um, we've got um, the lorry will be doing the, the truck, I should say, we're in the States, um, is going to be doing the uh, grain hauling this time round. Although with the three fields that we've got to harvest, I'm not sure that we're going to really need to worry about um, multiple trips back and forth. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to quite fit it on. If I could just get this one to go up over those wheels it would be better but I don't think that's going to happen either go on jump 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 that's as far as it's going to go it's not quite enough 
I might have to try. Right, I've squeezed it up as much as I can. I am going to attempt to pick it up, but I don't think I can get close enough to be able to do that. But, um, well, you've seen this before, so what I'm going to do, I'd like to get started on the harvest this episode. I'd like to make a good dent in that today. Um, I'm going to basically get all of this machinery back down to the yard. Yeah, we, there's no way I can do that. Um, I'm going to have to figure something else out. I might have to back it round um, and try it the other way round. I don't want to have to drive that Challenger down the road. And I can't take both of them with the Valtra. Um, I'll turn this round, load it up the other way, and then get everything back to the yard. And I will see you in the morning. I started doing a little bit of cleaning down here. Um, now that it's bright and early and the morning has come, we've got three fields here to harvest. This loaded up just fine, but it's actually now decided to slip off. That actually got up on there all right. It just sort of, it, I did have a bit of a struggle to get it lined up perfectly, but it did stay on there. I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. And now it's just gently slid off the side, just a fraction. Um... Before I start unloading all of that lot, I'll tell you what I will do, is we'll whiz up with the pickup. I don't actually have fuel here. Um, I need fuel for the Challenger, but I'm, it's not like a major issue right now, so that could wait just a little while. Um, so what we'll do is we'll nip up here, we'll pull out the header trailer and bring it over here so that it can sit down. I really do need to remember to buy a stump grinder, or at least a stump grinder, so that I can remove those stumps. Because at the moment, the tractors and machinery consider them to be stumps. We might actually do that. We'll set the combine going, and then whiz up to the shop, grab a stump grinder, come back. Um, we can clear those stumps, and then we'll just... I think we'll probably just pop it in the shed somewhere, to be honest. Because um, we are... It's something that we would be using again. Um, we, you know, when we eventually plan to do a bit of forestry. Because I think I'd probably want to try and like clear a few trees in some of the fields or something like that. Um, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll, we'll sort of think on that. But I, I'm going to go and get a stump grinder now. Um, well, as soon as we've got this harvest going. Then we can come back and we can start sorting out unloading some of the machinery. And possibly even going to get a fuel bowser as well. So that we can start getting some fuel. Um, I think that's probably actually the best way to do it. If we get it, we'll buy the fuel bowser, the transport one. We'll go to the garage. We'll top up with fuel. We'll bring it back here because the challenge is nearly empty and the stayer is running very low on fuel as well. I don't really want to have to drive them all the way up the roads in order to go and get said fuel. So we'll stick with it back here. And I'll just come over here like this. I'll start with this small field here. It's usually the best one to start with. And... Once it's worked through that one, then we can start working on the bigger field there. Um, I'm not sure how much canola we're going to get. I'm planning to, as soon as we've harvested the canola, I'm planning to sell it straight away. I'm not planning to hold on to it for any length of time. Unless, of course, the price is really bad. I really hate that the trailer does that. There doesn't seem to be anything we can do about it. Right, around there. Um... Right, uh, canola at the moment, but I mean that one's rising. That's over a thousand pound, a thousand dollars per thousand liters, which is a pretty good price actually. Uh, hopefully that will continue to rise, and then when we've harvested it all, we can see which one we go to sell it at. And that then the money that we get from that, I think the next thing that we want to get on this map is the cattle. That's that's got to be the next thing that we do, I think. Um, so once this is harvested and we've sold some, then it will be time for cattle. So we'll leave that one going. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and lease that fuel bowser. No, 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 no. Fuel bowser and a stump grinder. I need both of them. I might actually take the pickup and the, the voucher and we'll go on. We'll use the follow me. I'm just going to unhitch some stuff here. I think that's what we'll do. Yes, this is the fastest one on the road. So this is the one that I want for getting the stump grinder. Um, so if I bring that one out, I'll just drop the... Nope, I don't want to drop that one there. I want to drop that one there. And squeeze through here, I hope, without damaging anything. There we go. Unhitch this roller back in the shed. We're not going to need this one for a while now. And... Uh, I could put the front weight on. Actually, I'm not going to put the front weight on. Um, oh, no, that... See, that C-drill over there, we don't actually... 
we don't have plans to get a replacement yet. I was hoping to. Um, I'm not sure if we've got the money to. Or have we? We definitely, we can get rid of this cultivator. That one's to be sold. So we'll, we'll hitch that one on. And you know what? Let's just get rid of that seed drill when we want to plant um, corn or sunflowers again. We will go and lease a bigger one, and that can go on to the Challenger for doing that. So we'll take both of these lots with us, and I'll bring back the Fuel Bowser and the Stump Grinder with his tractor. That combine is doing a wonderful job. He's already managed to turn around without any hiccups at the top. Excellent. Everything is going well. So I will meet you up at the shop so that we can sell this equipment, and then we can lease the other two. Um, I think this is about the last of the equipment that we actually own. So... I think after that, it's just drivable machines, which is what we're hoping to get on this map. Anyway, I will meet you up at the dealership, and we can get the stump grinder, get those tree stumps out of the way. It's one of those little tiny jobs that I've been meaning to do for absolutely ages. Right, come in here, and I will unhitch the cultivator. Let's lower that one. Oh, wrong side. Uh, there we go. Oops. Okay, I didn't mean to drop it like that. That was not part of the plan. That's not the way to treat the machinery at all. Not even a little bit. Um, bring that one back in there and lower it down. Then unhitch it. That's a bit better. Um, yeah, one of the big issues I had with the manual attaching mod is that I couldn't lower the Amazon Condor down in order to um, unhitch it. It kept selling, telling me that I needed to lower it in order to be able to unhitch it. It just wouldn't except that I had lowered it. Um, it was in the unfolded position. So, yeah, I, I didn't like that at all. Um, I'll, I'll see. Maybe there was something I was overlooking or something like that. I'm not quite sure yet. But anyway, uh, forestry equipment. And we want to lease the stump grinder. Select and lease for just $550, which is a very reasonable price, I feel. Miscellaneous, we've got that fuel bowser there for 8500 That's three... 0.75 thousand liters this one is only 980 liters uh that one there is four and a half thousand liters right here's the thing they're both the same price that one looks that's the one that i i think that was the one that we had available in fs15 um it does come with a little pump although i'm assuming that, that one's got a pump as well in one of the roll-up doors and they look like this one is a lot bigger than this one. Although I suspect that part of this one is actually not storage space. I suspect it's where the engine and everything is for actually running the pump. Uh, whereas this one's got the pump on the front. Um, but it doesn't look like a four and a half thousand litre tank. There's not a lot in it, to be honest. Right, well, I've got that one on the time lapse series. So we're going to use this one. We're going to try the lizard one here. Um, rim color, no, we're not going to change any colors, so we lease out for $935, yes, okay, and back out of there, there's our two machines, I'm going to hitch them both on, and then I will run straight down to the fuel, see, that doesn't look very big, I know how big the other one is, I mean, mind you, the other one's not that much bigger than that, and if it's housing a pump and everything inside it as well, there's a possible, you know, there's a I'd say it's very realistic that it's um, uh, actually the size that it is. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I genuinely don't know what to say about that, because that doesn't look like it's a bigger tank than the other one, although all of that is tank space, whereas the other one is not all tank space. Um... Have I actually given a topic of conversation today? I don't think I have. This is today's topic of conversation. What do you think of this fuel bowser compared to the standard game one? Uh, the standard game silver sort of triangular shaped one is um, 3,750 litres, whereas this one is 4,500 litres. Do you think that it represents realism, these two fuel bowsers, and the scales that they have been depicted as? Um, have a discussion in the comment section, see what you think about it, I'd love to hear your views, or is there a fuel bowser out there that you think is much better than either of these two options that we've got? Right, I'm going to fill this one up, this is just 
dull slow stuff here so I will quickly fill this one up I will meet you back at the yard and we can see how our combine is progressing it should have just about finished the first field we can get the Tatra unloaded and get a trailer up to the combine so that we can start dealing with things up there okay I've come back with this lot and I've got four and a half thousand litres of fuel there. I'll worry about filling up tractors and stuff in a minute. What I'm going to do first, because the combine is there and is completely finished, we'll take this one here and I'm going to unhitch the back part, then come forwards and I'm also going to unhitch this part here so that... Okay, it won't let you do that. So... Okay, I need to do this quickly. I want to get that... I, I need to keep the harvest moving is basically what I need to do. So, let me just come into this one. We'll drag this one forward off of there. There we go. Bounce. And if I spin round, I could actually start filling this one up. I can park it up next to that fuel bowser, start filling it up. We'll clean it all off in a little while. Come over here. Park you right there, like that, and start filling it up. Then rush over here onto this one and put these two back together oh, I still got no idea what this one was playing at um, with the, the whole issue of it like leaping up and down I've never ever seen it do that before it didn't do it again I didn't have any problems coming back I came I actually came the same way just to see if it would do it and I had nothing at all there was, there was no issues there at all um, this one I'm gonna store this in the same place that I do on the time-lapse map I'm gonna come up here it is easier when I don't have all those trees in the way so um, I might be tempted to do that at some point. We put that one there, unhitch that one there and leave him. Then we come back round again and I will go and get that Crampe trailer. And I was actually told by someone from Germany that this make of trailer is a German make. And in Germany, if it's got an E on the end, you actually pronounce the E. So it wouldn't be Cramp. If it was Cramp, it would just be spelt K-R-A-M-P. But because it's got the E, it's actually pronounced Crampe. So it is Crampe trailer. Um, which is actually, I'm really pleased that I found that out. Because um, I do like to, as many of you now know, make sure I get things as accurate as possible. Um, I really hate being inaccurate when I'm trying to tell you things. So that is a Crampe trailer. Um, it might be a crampy trailer, but I don't think it is. Um, from what I've sort of experienced with German pronunciations of things in the past, I would say, I would be surprised if it's crampy. I would say that it's actually crampe. Um, so our crampe trailer. Load that one up with all of the canola. We were over 80% when we stopped the combine. So we're going to go up that side of the field there and we'll do one pass along the top so that the combine can turn around properly. And then we're just going to leave that one going and then we're going to come back down here. We've got more machinery to clean off. Our yard is an absolute pigsty at the moment. It's disgusting. We've got stuff everywhere. It is a reason to hang our heads in shame. This is not how you should have your yard. You shouldn't have machinery just absolutely lagged in filth and laid everywhere all over the place. It should be put away clean and tidy and well looked after um, so that is something that we are going to be working on we are obviously next episode we're going to be continuing with this harvest and we'll make sure that everything is put away um, and while we continue with the harvest what we will also do I think is just put the hired help going on there we'll watch this one up to the top end of the field what we will also do is we'll be able to start doing some um, planting and cultivating stuff we got to cultivate the fields because we got the Amazon condor Let's just take a quick look and see if we need to do any ploughing this time round. Um, nothing there. Right, field 15 needs to be ploughed. Doesn't look like 14 needs ploughing at the moment. But 15 definitely needs ploughing. So we could get started on that one with the ploughing straight away. It doesn't look like that 14 is going to need ploughing. Um, so that one would be okay. I don't know about field 12. After it's been cut, obviously it might need it as well. So we've got one field to plough and the fields up the top they're growing we don't have to worry about them at all for a little while they've also got enough fertilizer we did everything all all in one go and that's what i'd like to do in the future up there as well i'd like to be able to go up there deal with the entire field and do everything it needs doing and then we come back and we can forget about it it does make life a lot easier if you can if you can do that because it's long distance um a place that i used to work 
Uh, it was a big estate that I worked on. I worked on there for more than a year and most of the land that we had was sort of around the farm. You know, it was nearly 3,000 acres that we had um, uh, around the main yard. And you, you did sort of, you know, obviously 3,000 acres, you do have to travel a little bit. And I realized that in some places of the world uh, that is nothing more than a little hobby farm. However, here in the UK, 3,000 acres is a fair sized farm. We also had another 900 acres um, several miles away from the farm. When I say several miles, I mean a good, um, I think it was about 12 miles away from the farm. So it's far enough that it would take a little while to get there with tractors and machinery and stuff. So what we would do is basically they would plan the crops so that we had cutting around the main farm. Then we would move up to this other area and we would do everything up there that needed to be cut all in one go. Um, and then we could move all the combines back. We wouldn't have to go back up there with the combines. And then um, for planting, we would take any, if there was going to be any plowing done, we'd take the plows, the cultivators, rollers, um, drill, everything. It would all go up there in one big long convoy. Then we would stay up there. Obviously, you'd come home in the evenings um, after you've done your work. And um, we would stay up there and just work that one estate for a few weeks. And it was usually about two weeks, I think, to get it all done. And then once it was all done, then we would um, head back home and we'd work on the rest of the land. But it was like um, the logistics of it were a little bit different to how going around a normal farm would be. Because you sort of spread everything out and um, you had to do a lot of moving and um, well, uh, moving all of the machinery and everything up there. You kind of planned to get everything all there all at once um, so that you could do all of the jobs all at once. And you didn't have to worry about... Um, constant trips up and down up and down all the time because it's just so inefficient doing it like that now one problem that we do have here is that this stair needs to be cleaned so the last thing that i'm going to do before i go is i'm going to clean the stair then tomorrow we'll be um we've got to put away a load of our machinery and um i might put some of it i can actually mean for it to just dump off like that but still that'll be fine and we'll pull back from there Get this one now we can clean this and uh, there's patch 1.4 is coming out very soon for farming simulator and when patch 1.4 comes out apparently one of the things that they're hoping to fix is this loader arm not washing when it's not attached to the tractor uh, or when it is attached to the tractor um, now something that they are planning to actually fix so that um, it will all be done properly so let's just make sure that we've cleaned all the way around it and it is all done properly there we go and put that one away um, I've also need to decide what I'm going to plant here in these fields next and I might be able to get started on the planting this week although I don't actually I don't think I will um, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to start the planting so what I'd like you to do is to I know that I've given you a topic of discussion which is about the fuel bowsers but I would also like you to just discuss briefly um, what you think of... Actually, let's go up to the combine and see how that's getting on. Um, I'll take the Tatra up there and we can unload it if it's coming back down the field. Um, I would also like you to discuss what I'm going to plant in these fields because I'm not going to start it this week. Um, if I was, I wouldn't be able to read your comments before I did the next recording. Um, but that's okay, we don't actually have that issue. Um, so let me know in the comment section what you think I should plant in these three fields. I'm going to keep planting these three fields the same crop. Um, I don't think it's worth spreading out different crops in these three. Um, we will plant a different crop up in field one so that we do have some variety. And if we get more fields around here, we will sort of increase the variety with that as well. But just for these three, I don't think we need to worry too much about um, crop disease for having them all the same because it's only three small-ish fields. So we'll just stop here. Well, so far, we've got 12,000 litres. Um, I think we're going to do all right. I think we'll probably end up, I would guess, with around 35,000 litres. That's my guess. 35,000, which at the moment with the prices is roughly $35,000. Uh, it's not a huge amount, but it would be enough to allow us to get cows. And I did say last week that I was hoping to get cows this week. And it looks like I have failed on that one because we're not going to have the money to deliver. So I'm hoping that I can do maybe a few extra jobs or something, get a bit more money than the 50 grand that we end up with on this, and I can deliver that to you next week. I'll finish this field, 
before next episode. And then in our last episode this week, we can finish cutting and do that field over there and make a start on cultivations and ploughings and so on here as well as tidying everything up. Uh, my question for this week is I am considering buying some placeable greenhouses. I am going to buy one bee house at some point. Everybody enjoyed my lecture on beekeeping last week. I'm really pleased about that. Um, I had a few interesting comments made and discussed in the comment section, which I really enjoyed. Um, and yeah, so I was really pleased that everybody sort of responded so positively to that. So um, one of the big strong suggestions was getting the bee house. So I will do that. I will buy a bee house and put it somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, in the meantime, my question for this week is I'm considering buying four greenhouses, two of each, spend $100,000 on them. Um, do you want me to or do you think I should not and I should use the money for something else? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know what you want me to do, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote by mousing over up here and clicking on the little white circle. Um, if you want to have your say, then make sure you have your vote. It's your vote, it's your game. You are the... Um, the control is yours, you, you have the power in your hands. But if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.